Now, I haven't used these words in a while. I'm spoiling you. I wasn't planning on doing a video today. I wasn't planning on doing two videos, two videos, two days in a row. But, uh, oh, let me turn off notifications. Um, and hopefully this one won't, won't, this one won't be too long. I don't mind, though, doing an extra video. Cause yesterday I planned on doing my last video for the week. But I can tell you already, I already pre-warned you guys that uh, July is going to be a very busy month for me. So number one, I'm not going to be doing that many videos, period, in July. And definitely free videos. The few videos I do, or at least half of them, are going to be just Patreon exclusive videos. As far as free videos. Yeah, like, because next week I'm going to be out of town. <clears throat> from Tuesday night through that following Monday morning. From Tuesday night through that following Monday morning, I'm going to be out of town. So while I'm out of town, I might do one Patreon exclusive video, but I definitely won't be doing any free YouTube videos. So anyway, I don't mind spoiling you all. But the reason I'm coming back the next day, this is kind of somewhat of a follow-up to yesterday's video. And I should have anticipated this because, you know, last year, was that? No, early this year, actually. Yeah, well, that both. Last year and early this year, if you remember, I did a series of videos. Sometimes I'll get on these themes. I'll have one theme where I might do three, four, five, six videos on that one particular theme, such as direct versus indirect. And I haven't done a lot of direct versus indirect videos. But after watching yesterday's videos, some people, not too many guys, but at least a handful, wrote me basically defending indirect. Although they were basically saying, Alan, I agree with a lot of your points about direct, but they were essentially going to say, but I have to say that I think indirect a lot of times is more beneficial than direct. Like one guy I was just reading this morning, he used this phrase that I can't stand. I can't stand this phrase, man. Um, well, first, I need to get my video high for a few seconds. So, Alexa, <laughs> you know what I'm about to say. Alexa, transform me into cartoon mode for just a few seconds. Okay, as you wish. <laughs> Floating in the clouds. All right, Alexa. Take me back to real life, back to reality. If that is what you really want, King Allen, back to life, back to reality. Thank you, Alexa. You are very welcome, Mr. Curry. Mode one. This guy in my comment section used this phrase, and you know, I got to bring up your boy again. I got to bring him up again. Alpha male strategies, because I think he's the one who started this. Last year, when we were going back and forth with each other on our philosophical disagreement, one of the things Alpha Male Strategy said that he didn't like about direct verbal game, and more specifically, Mo One, is he presented the argument. <clears throat> excuse me. Hold on a second. He presented the argument that if a man is direct with women, particularly in the very first conversation, that it will result in him leaving pussy on the table. Leaving pussy on the table. How many times I got to explain this to you guys? How many times I got to explain this to you guys? There is no such thing as leaving pussy on the table if a woman hasn't offered you guaranteed pussy. Let me repeat that. There is no such thing 
as leaving pussy on the table with the exception of if a woman has already offered you guaranteed pussy. See, y'all need to know the history of where certain phrases come from. And again, I've explained this before, but I'll explain it again. The term leaving something on the table, that comes from the world of business negotiations and financial negotiations. That's where that comes from. That's where that comes from. Basically, I, I use the one analogy I've used a couple times is that of a sports agent. Well, speaking of sports agent, I give you a real life example. I give you a recent real life example. If you're a sports fan, and particularly an NBA basketball fan, and you've been keeping up with the news, you know that Kevin Durant, who played for the Golden State Warriors the last three years, recently declined his player option for $31.5 million. Now, most of the experts have already pointed out that he would make more money if he was just to simply stay with the Golden State Warriors. He would make more money. If he goes to another team, he's not going to make as much money as he would if he stayed with the Golden State Warriors. What does that mean in simple terms? By Kevin Durant declining that $31.5 million player option for the upcoming season, he is leaving money on the table. He's leaving money on the table. He's willing, basically, he's willing to go to another team and get paid less money than to stay with the Golden State Warriors and make more money. That's the official definition of leaving money on the table. That's what it means to leave money on the table. It's just like if I was a sports agent and I was representing an athlete and say I was negotiating with the Chicago Bulls and they offered me, offered to, to pay my player $10 million a year. But my player said, no, the Chicago Bulls, they're not a championship contender team. I would rather play for a team that's going to be in a, a realistic position to contend for an NBA championship. So he decides to go to the Golden State Warriors for $6 million a year instead of playing for the Bulls for $10 million a year. That would mean that my the player I'm representing, he's leaving $4 million on the table. He's leaving $4 million on the table. In negotiating terms, that's what it means to leave money on the table is when somebody is offering you guaranteed money but you respectfully decline that money because you don't like the terms and conditions that you have to accept that are associated with that money. That's what it means to leave money on the table. Or it could be you leaving a job on the table. Let's say somebody offers you a job where you're going to be making a nice salary, but they tell you that you're going at least two Saturdays a month, you're going to have to, you're going to, have to work on Saturdays. And you don't really want to work on Saturdays. You you want your Saturdays and Sundays off. So you say, no. Let's say they offered you $150,000 a year. And you say, no, I'm going to take this other job making $90,000 a year where I don't have to work on Saturdays and Sundays rather than take a job making $150,000 a year where I have to work two Saturdays a month. That would mean you leaving both money on the table and you leaving that job offer on the table because you don't like the terms and conditions associated with it. That's what it means to leave something on the table. Now let's bring it to pussy. The only way you can truly, validly, legitimately leave pussy on the table is if a woman has offered to give you some guaranteed pussy and you decline it. Let's say you meet a woman named Tiffany. She's really attractive, really sexy. And Tiffany says, okay, Frank, here's the deal. I really want to get married. I want to get married like really, really bad because I I just turned 30 last year and, you know, I've had my fun. I want to get married. I don't want any more casual sex relationships. 
So here's the deal. If you promise to put a ring on my finger in the next six months, no later than six months from now, I'm going to let you fuck me every week for the next six months and add in a bonus. I know you're attracted to my good friend Darlene, so I'm going to let you have a threesome with me and Darlene at least once and as many as three times between now and the time we get married. I'm going to let you have a threesome with me and Darlene as long as you promise to put a ring on my finger within the next six months. And let's say you say, hmm, nah, sorry, Tiff. <clears throat> sorry, Tiffany. I, I can't promise you that. I'm not willing to promise you that I'm going to put a ring on your finger in the next six months because I don't know if I'm ready for marriage just yet. I want to still, you know, keep my options open. So as great as that offer sounds, I'm going to have to respectfully decline it. And she says, what? I'm going to let you fuck me before we officially get engaged. And I'm going to let you have a threesome with me and my attractive, sexy girlfriend, Darlene, at least once, if not three times. And you still going to turn down this offer? And he's like, yeah. That would be a legitimate example of you leaving pussy on the table. That would be a valid example of you leaving pussy on the table. That's leaving pussy on the table. If a woman offers you a scenario where she's guaranteeing you that she's going to engage in sexual relations with you, but because there's something about the terms and conditions of the sexual relationship that you don't like, you say, no. I'm not down. That's leaving pussy on the table. That's leaving pussy on the table. I give you another example, and this is very uh, uh, even a more realistic example. Let's say you meet another woman, Amber. You meet Amber, and Amber lets you know that she's attracted to you, but. She makes it known that she's tired of casual sex. She just has no interest in casual sex whatsoever. She doesn't want to engage in any sexual relationship that's of a short-term and or non-monogamous manner. She's of a short-term. She doesn't want to engage in any sexual relationship that's of a short-term and or non-monogamous manner. So she says, whatever your first name is, Brian, Leon, Reginald, whatever. She says, hey, Brian, I'm willing to have sex with you as long as it's within the context of a long-term, emotionally profound, strictly monogamous relationship. And you know your interest is short-term, non-monogamous sex, or that might even be long-term, non-monogamous sex, i.e. polyamory. Or it could be short-term monogamous sex, serial monogamy. Basically, any option but the option she's offering. And you say, nah, no. Nah. I'm not willing to, I'm not willing to engage in sex with you if it has to be within the context of a long-term, exclusively committed, emotionally profound relationship. No, nah, no. Nah. I'll pass. See, that would be an example of you leaving pussy on the table. Now, honestly. In that category, that example I just gave, I've actually left pussy on the table in that regard. I sure have. I'll admit that. In that, using that example that I just gave, I've actually, there have been actually dozens of women that I've left pussy on the table. Yeah, I've had women who basically told me that they wanted to give me some pussy as long as it was within the context of a long-term, emotionally profound, strictly monogamous relationship. And I was like, no, nah, I don't want that. So in that case, you can say, Alan, damn, Alan left pussy on the table. Man, because these women made it known for made it known to me. Matter of fact, if it's one story off the top of my head, I did a book signing event in 
Ventura County, California. This was way back in 2006. And most of my longtime followers know about that book signing. That was actually, I want to say, that was like my second book signing ever, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that was my second book signing event ever after my paperback version of Mo One came out. And there was a real attractive woman there, Redbone. She was a red bone, red bone for those non-black people who might not be familiar with that term. A red bone is a woman that's light, has a light complexion, um, like Apollonia from Purple Rain or Beyonce. Most people would consider her a red bone. Um, I'm trying to think of other people. There's quite a few women. I'm, their names are escaping me for some reason. But yeah, a red bone is a light black skinned woman. Um, attractive, lighter skinned black woman. Um, but um, yeah, there was this red bone there that I was attracted to <clears throat> and she was attracted to me. And I, I wanted to fuck her while I was in California. But she told me that the only way she was going to let me fuck her was if I was willing to get in, be in a relationship with her, a long-term, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend type relationship. And I was basically like, no, nah, I don't want that. And she said, okay. She was like, you sure? I was like, nope. She's like, okay. She was basically in so many words saying, this pussy, I'm telling you, you can have this pussy, but you can't have it within the context of casual sex. It got to be within the context of relationship. And I was like, I understand that. No, thank you. That was a situation where I left pussy on the table. Now, see, this is why you have guys who are liars and manipulators. Because what, what do guys who are liars and manipulators do? In simple term, to use one of Alpha Male Strategy's terms, sleazeballs. Because that's what a sleazeball is. It's a liar and a manipulator. The average sleazeball guy He's going to do what a lot of PUAs recommend, which is you lie to the woman, say, yes, I'm interested in a long-term monogamous relationship. And then after you fuck the woman three times, five times, ten times, you just find a reason to break up with her. And I know a lot of guys who do that, including some of my own friends and frat brothers. A lot of my frat brothers when I was in college, that's what they used to do. They would give a woman the misleading impression that they wanted a long-term, emotionally profound, strictly committed relationship. But then after they fucked the woman three times, five times, 10 times, 15 times, they would just find an excuse to break up with the woman. Matter of fact, that's what led to that infamous conversation I had with those three sorority girls, the Alpha Kappa Alpha, if you know my backstory about how Mo One got created. Because that was one of their complaints, was that very scenario. See, that's where my ethics come in. And I know a lot of guys always say, oh, man, I don't like to include ethics when it comes to getting laid. But that's what my, I can't do that, man. If other guys are willing to do that, more power to them. I, I'm not going to lie to no bitch like that, man. I'm serious. I'm not going to lie to no woman like that. If I know I only want casual sex, and I know for a fact that a woman wants uh, sex only within the context of a long-term, emotionally profound, strictly monogamous relationship, I'm not going to lie to no woman like that just to get some ass. I'm not willing to do that, man. That I call that toying with a woman's emotions. When you do that, you're toying with a woman's emotions. And I'm going to be honest with you, man. I pointed this out before that. That's, that's risky. That's risky. And in a very extreme example, I know a motherfucker, and y'all know this story. I know a motherfucker that got shot in the head for doing that shit. And I'm not even joking. That other guy, no, he's a he's a friend of my cousin. He got shot in the head because of that. Yeah, he was toying with a woman's emotions, man. Made her believe that he was all into her when he was really fucking around with a bunch of different women. She came to his crib and shot him in the head. Now, that's a very extreme example, but it just shows. What does that show you, though? What does that show you, though, about toying with a woman's emotions? This woman was willing to go to prison. She was willing to get revenge on this guy at the expense of going to prison. That's what that shows you, that story. That woman 
was willing to get revenge on this guy at the expense of going to prison. I've seen other women do stuff like uh, destroy a man's car. I've seen that with my own eyes. Women take a bat to a guy's car. Uh, one woman, I saw her pour gasoline on a dude's car. Light and just lit it up. Just lit that motherfucking car up, man. I ain't even joking. My brother know about it. Man, because this dude had led her to believe he was in a committed relationship with her. Turns out he was cheating on her. She heard him fucking another chick. Man, he lit. It was an expensive car, too. She lit that motherfucker on fire. She lit that motherfucker. I had a frat brother. Toy with a woman's emotions. Man, she came to his apartment, took some scissors and cut up like $1,500 worth of his clothes. There's a saying, bro, fellas, if y'all don't know it already, um, hell hath no fury like a woman scorned, man. I don't toy with no woman's emotions, man. Not just because I'm scared of retribution. That's more of a secondary thing. It's just not in my values and ethics system. It's not in my integrity to do that. And now that I'm a, from a business standpoint, now that I'm an established book author and dating coach, I don't really have any choice. Even if I wanted to be a liar and a manipulator, that would make me lose credibility like almost overnight. If I was to get a reputation after writing a book like Mo One, that's all about upfront, straightforward honesty. If I was to fuck some women by lying to them, misleading them and manipulating them and, and toying with their emotions, not only would I be going against my own personal ethics, but from a just a business and career standpoint, I would lose credibility. I would I would literally lose credibility as a book author and a dating coach. So I'm in a position where I can't even, even if I wanted to be a liar and a manipulator, I couldn't be. Because it would make me lose credibility. And I talked about this on videos before. When you're a self-help guru, credibility is everything. Credibility is everything. <laughs> Trust me. Credibility is everything. When you when you, when you you market yourself as a self-help guru, credibility is everything. It's just like, if you come out with a book about eating right and exercising on a regular basis, but then all of a sudden people catch you eating junk food on a daily basis and not exercising, you're getting fat and sloppy looking, you're going to lose credibility. If you wrote a book about eating right and exercising in order to improve your physique, but when people see you, they always see you eating junk food and they never see you exercising, you will lose credibility. People wouldn't buy your book no more. They'd be like, this motherfucker, he not living what he talking about. He not living what he talking about. So again, if I was to be a liar or a manipulator of women, people would be like, oh, then his mo one is bullshit. He talked all that shit in Mo One and he out here lying and manipulating women just like the rest of us guys. So see, I would never do that, man. I would lose credibility. But even if I wasn't a book author or a dating coach, that just goes against my I don't like I don't like lying to women like that. Again, I know a lot of guys do that. But anyway. So when you guys say, well, Alan, I like direct. But I think the problem with direct is you leave pussy on. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. If a woman hasn't offered you guaranteed pussy, you're not leaving pussy on the table. You know what that would be like me saying? And I think I've used this example before. For you guys to simply say that being direct automatically causes you to leave pussy on the table would be like me going up to one of my friends or acquaintances and say, hey, man, you need to go to Las Vegas this weekend. They say, why? I said, because you need to gamble and win some money. And they said, oh, I don't really want to gamble. I said, oh, if you don't go to Vegas this weekend, you're leaving money on the table. You're leaving money on the table. If somebody was to ever say that to you, or a similar thing would be, let's say you live in a state where they have a state lottery, and the lottery was up to $400 million. And one of your friends said, hey, man, you need to play the lottery this weekend. You say, why? You say, because the jackpot's up to $400 million. And you say, I don't really, I'm not really into playing a lottery. And that guy says, man, you leaving $400 million on the table. This is what I want you to say to your friend. Insert dog face here. If you choose not to go to Vegas and gamble, or you choose not to play the lottery because it has a jackpot of $400 million, you are not leaving money on the table. Why? 
because you're not guaranteed to get that money. You're not guaranteed to get that money. You got a chance at winning that lottery, a very extremely slim chance, but you got a chance. But gambling is not the same thing. Gambling for money is not the same thing as leaving money on the table. You can only leave money on the table when it's been already offered to you as a guarantee. So if you choose to never go to Las Vegas and gamble, you're not leaving money on the table because that money was never guaranteed to you. Same with women. That's what, again, I'm going to point out for the millionth time. Why do you think on the cover of my book, The Possibility of Sex, I got a man about to play a slot machine? That's why I have that slot machine on the cover, The Possibility of Sex. Anytime you use indirect game with women, what you're doing is you're gambling. You're gambling with your time and you're gambling with your money. At minimum, you're gambling with your time and at, and at maximum, you're gambling with both time and money. You're gambling with both time and money. And just like playing a lottery or just like gambling in Vegas, when you gamble with your time and money, you're always going to have a chance at winning. You're always going to have a chance at winning, but you're going to have a greater chance at losing. One thing I love about sports, I don't know how many of you guys play sports in high school or high school and or college level. I wasn't no great high school athlete, but I aspired to be. And people who've been following for a while, they know about at least two stories related to sports in high school. My freshman year, my, my teammates selected me as the quarterback of the football team, but then I got sick for a week. I was always, just like I was sick recently, man, as a kid, I, I had a lot of sicknesses. Matter of fact, quick story, my mother, I mean, my doctor told my mother when I was born, because my mother, when she was growing up, she had a lot of health ailments. Matter of fact, to the point where her parents didn't think she would get married. They didn't think she would be able to find a husband because she was always in and out of hospitals. And, um, and, um, but yet a doctor told my mother, your second son, my prediction is he's going to be sick a lot as he grows up. And I was. I was out of school for illnesses probably three to five times as much as my brother was. Anyway, that's another story for another day. But I got sick while I was playing freshman football. And when I came back, the head varsity coach, not my freshman coach, but the head varsity coach, he demoted me. He said, quarterbacks don't get sick. Quarterbacks can't afford to get sick. Do you know... Here's a lesson for you about grudges. You know, they say you should never hold grudges. And I agree with that. You shouldn't. But I'll confess. I hold a, a, a grudge against my head varsity coach for over 20 years, man. Most of my close friends, my brother know it. Yeah, my brother used to tell me all the time. He said, bro, you need to get over that, man. Bad man, I held a grudge against him for a long time, man. I was pissed. Stopped playing football the rest of my high school career. Um... Because the only position I really wanted to play was quarterback. And um, then the second thing, I tried to make the basketball team my junior year and senior year and didn't make it. Because I, I could shoot my ass off. If I had to say something, I was a great shooter like Steph Curry. I was live up to the Curry day. I could shoot, man, but my weakness, I didn't have no handles. Specifically, my left hand. My, my left hand dribbling skills were weak. Anyway, that's another story, too, for another day. But... Um, what made me bring this in now? I lost my train of thought. What made me bring up? Oh, I was saying that. You hear people say that sports is all about winning. Like Vince Lombardi said, has that famous quote, where winning's not the everything, it's the only thing. But I'm going to tell you the greatest value of sports, man, if you play sports, is that it teaches you how to accept the L. It teaches you how to accept the L, man. It teaches you that everything in life ain't going to go your way. Everything in life ain't going to go your way. See, that's what it means to be spoiled, is when you expect everything to go your way. Everything in life ain't going to go your way, man. A lot of times, you just got to take the L, man. You just, you just got to take the L. And you you know you guys have heard me in my admonishment videos talk about how some men, they just can't handle rejection from women. There are men who've actually killed women because they got rejected. 
or if not killed them, physically assaulted them because they got rejected. Because they couldn't take the L, man. And going back to direct versus indirect, that's one of the reasons why a lot of guys choose indirect over direct. Because they can't take the L. They don't want to take the L, man. So they're willing to lie to women. They're willing to mislead and manipulate women. They're willing to give a woman the, the misleading impression that they desire and value and appreciate that woman's non-sexual attention and companionship just as much as that woman's sexual attention and companionship when they know damn well they don't. That's what a lot of indirect guys do. They give women a misleading impression that I want both your sexual and your non-sexual companionship when really they just want that woman's sexual companionship. Some guys with money will, will either spend money on women to get the pussy or they'll give a woman a misleading impression that they're going to be financially generous with that woman just to get the pussy. And then once they get the pussy, they don't spend shit on that bitch. Because they don't want to take the L, man. They don't want to take the L. I can take the L. Alan Roger Curry is a master at taking the L. I always tell guys, you'll never be successful with women if you can't accept rejection. I always use an analogy. Look at home run hitters in baseball, Major League Baseball. Almost all the guys that rank in the top 10 home run hitters usually rank in the top 10, top 15, top 20 in leaders in strikeouts. Most home run hitters also lead the league in strikeouts. If you can't handle rejection, you ain't ready to be successful with women. It's that simple. If you can't handle rejection, you ain't ready to be successful with women. I can take the L. Can you? Can you? So if all you guys making this argument about, well, Alan, I like direct, but honestly, my one problem with direct is it's going to cause you to miss out on opportunities and leave pussy on the table. Quit saying that stupid shit. Seriously. If you want to continue commenting in my comment section or you want me to continue reading your emails or Facebook inbox messages, stop saying that stupid shit. Because if you continue to say it, I'm going to block you. And I'm serious. I'm going to block you. Don't say that stupid shit to me. It's stupid. You know how I feel about stupid people and stupid comments. It's stupid. It's stupid. You don't leave pussy on the table unless it's been offered to you. That's the only time you can legitimately say you've left pussy on the table is if pussy has been offered to you. If pussy, if a woman hasn't given you a, a, a offer of guaranteed pussy, then you ain't left shit on the table. You ain't left shit on the table. Because here's the deal, man, particularly when it comes to casual sex, and I've pointed this out a million times, and I'm going to wrap up on this, man. Women know as quickly as the first 30 seconds after they meet you and no later than roughly the 10-minute mark of their first conversation with you if they want to engage in short-term, non-monogamous casual sex with you. They know that. That ain't nothing that takes days, weeks, or months for a woman to determine. And anybody who tries to make you believe that, they, they, they a snake oil salesman. They lying to you. When it comes to, out of the four types of sexual companionship, long-term monogamous, long-term non-monogamous, short-term monogamous, and short-term non-monogamous, if there's at least one out of those four that women know as quickly as the first 30 seconds after they meet you and no later than the 10-minute mark of the first conversation is short-term nominal. And again, when I was in Los Angeles in November of uh, last year, I had a conversation with about 15 women. All of them confirmed that. All of them confirmed that. All of those women I, I had conversations with confirmed that. Women know immediately if they want to engage. If Remember I was talking about in the, yesterday's video about fuck buddy versus friends with benefits? When it comes to a woman wanting to be your fuck buddy, your fuck buddy, women know as soon as they meet you if they're willing to be your fuck buddy. Women know as soon as they meet you whether uh, they're willing to be your fuck buddy. And that's real talk. Women know within 10 minutes or less after they meet you if they're willing to be your fuck buddy. Now, when it comes to being your long-term, your wife, your fiance, your long-term girlfriend, or some other sexual relationship that involves you spending a significant amount of time with them both sexually and non-sexually, then yeah, 
That's when it can take women days or weeks or months or even sometimes years for them to come to a final decision. So in that regard, they, it can take a woman a while. But when it comes to being a, a, a man's casual fuck buddy, women know that within the first 10 minutes or less after they meet you. They know that within the first 10 minutes or less after they meet you if they're willing to be your fuck buddy. So in that regard, if your specific objective is for a woman to be your fuck buddy, there's no reason for you not to be direct. There's really no reason for you not to be direct. Now, if you're looking for a wife, some type of long-term romantic companion, then you can make some arguments about direct versus indirect. You can make some legitimate arguments about direct versus indirect. I'll give you that. You can make some arguments when it comes to more of a long-term relationship that involves spending time with women both sexually and non-sexually. But definitely when it comes to, if your specific objective is short-term non-monogamous casual sex where you're looking specifically for a fuck buddy, you are wasting time and money trying to be indirect. You are wasting time and money trying to be indirect. I will stake my life on that assertion. I will bet you 10 stacks on that assertion. You are wasting time. Women know. Women know. Women know as soon as they meet you if they want to be your fuck buddy. They know as soon as they meet you. Period. No Patreon exclusive portion, but I do have a Patreon exclusive live stream today for my $10 subscribers and up. It starts at 4 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. I'll talk to you then. Peace.